It is Kaiser's will this gate to the west bear the flag of the Legion. Kaiser's will shall be done. Within Fallout, there are various factions and large groups attempting to rebuild and change the harsh wastes into something livable for others and future generations to come after nuclear war has decimated most of the planet. Despite their reputation, Caesar's Legion can be considered one of these groups, as well as one of the most complex in Fallout's long history. Forged from the massive amounts of tribes Caesar has conquered over the years, the Legion is easily one of the most hard-hearted and merciless groups in the Fallout franchise, which is saying a lot when taking other groups, like the sadistic raider gangs spread across the wastes, or the vicious super mutants that make up the Master's ranks into consideration. But it is after their long, hard-fought battles conquering eastern territories that they came to Nevada and met their match, the New California Republic. Originating as early as the events of Fallout 2 and 2241, the NCR could be considered the Legion's complete ideological opposite. The two empires first crossed paths in 2277 when Caesar first looked towards Hoover Dam as well as New Vegas for the next target of his conquest. The why of it? Hoover Dam. Kimball. Kaiser. House. You'd think that our whole world was that wall cutting the Colorado. If I'd never laid eyes on it, never spoke of it. But once found, it was all Kaisar could see. That, and the flag beyond it, another symbol, big enough to challenge him. Throughout the Mojave, the Legion terrorizes any and all affiliated with the NCR, regardless of if they're soldier or citizen. Before their philosophy, or anything of their command structure, the Legion is known first and foremost for their atrocities and savage nature. This has led to the vast majority of the Vegas population either being indifferent or despising Caesar's Legion and seeing them as nothing more than a band of rape-happy, raiding slavers. The Legion, however, revels in their horrendous reputation and uses it to their advantage. There are plenty of occasions where mention of the Legion is enough to get characters uneasy or even slightly belligerent. What a load of Brahmin! Can you believe that guy? Though the rumors of the Legion that can cause these reactions spread quickly throughout the game, few of the rumors spread by nameless NPCs are spread as often as the rumors of Caesar's strongest battle commander, the Terror of the East, Legatlanius. Lanius' origins have been told differently between the different characters with dialogue that speak of him, and this adds to his intimidation factor as a figure who's a mystery to even the men that he's in charge of and make up his ranks. A great warrior. When he was but a recruit, I watched him kill ten men in the arena with his bare hands. He doesn't feel pain, and he never ever shows mercy. If all legionaries were like him, the legion would be invincible. He's the best warrior in the legion. A full legionary by the time he was twelve, he's never lost a battle. Had the legate been in command during the Battle of Hoover Dam, the legion would have won. I have no doubt about that. It took years for Kaisar to conquer Lanius's tribe, and Kaisar showed mercy to the survivors, allowing them to join the Legion. Had the positions been reversed, Kaisar would be dead. Lanius is called the Monster of the East because he never, ever shows mercy. However, the most commonly accepted one is given by Caesar himself. Lanius is the greatest of my battlefield commanders. Some might call him a great man, but I'm not sure he qualifies. Once, he was the greatest warrior of the Hydebarks, a tribe of the Arizona. Maniacal in battle. Sometimes he'd ambush Legion patrols by himself. When after several months we found and surrounded the Hydebarks camp, their chieftain raised a banner of surrender. The warrior who was not yet Linnaeus went insane with rage. He struck down his chieftain and attacked his own tribe. He killed 15 before they brought him down. He didn't die, obviously. I had him tended to. He was maimed, most of his face torn off. It was days before he regained consciousness. When he did, I went to his bedside and showed him the helmet I'd had forged to cover his face. I said he could have it if he'd fight for me. He accepted, on condition that he be allowed to kill the surviving males of his tribe. I said, make it the adult males, and you have a deal. Caesar very clearly takes a lot of pride in Lanius and his savage nature. The Legate has a presence that can even be felt at even the earliest points in the courier's journey, 
even when simply listening to the radio. In addition, refugees at Bitter Springs are giving startling accounts of the legate known as Lanius, who is said to be Caesar's top field commander. One refugee told us the legate took over an underperforming squad of troops by beating its commander to death in full view of everyone. The legate then ordered a tenth of his own force be killed by the other nine tenths. And you thought your boss was a pain. And the description of these horrific events are just a drop in the ocean of the atrocious practices of Caesar's legion. The legion is known to enslave or rape any women they conquer if they don't become a priestess or forcibly marry to a ranking legion officer, as they are forbidden to fight for the legion due to Caesar seeing women as inferior to men. What do you want from me, woman? I'm in charge of the arena, not the cooking pots. Know your place, woman. Unlike the profligates of the NCR, only men fight in the Legion. Women are beneath notice, as Kaisar has taught us. I'm only allowing you to speak to me because you are Kaisar's guest. The same goes for most men as well. Any that aren't strong enough or remain unpolluted by the wastes or their tribal identity in order to fight under the bull are enslaved or crucified. They leave mines next to dead or disabled NCR soldiers as traps to any who may try to rescue or recover their bodies, and they have no qualms about wiping other smaller factions off the face of the Mojave if they don't fight for Caesar. These violent acts apply to the Legate as well, who sacrifices people to the Roman god of war, Mars, as well as striking his own slaves blind so they can't see his face, adding more to his mystery factor. And at this point, we don't know anything about Lanius other than the fact that he's extremely battle-hungry, violent, and sadistic. And while this should sound like a terrible setup for a character so far, somehow it completely works. This only adds a greater emphasis and importance on the coming second battle of Hoover Dam, and any courier that hears word of Legion atrocities may be a bit intimidated heading to the dam or even Cottonwood Cove for the first time after receiving Caesar's mark. But once you get to Cottonwood Cove and cross the river to the fort, you're met with the more interesting aspects of the Legion and what makes them an actual faction. Well, you're first likely to see the slaves trying to haul the heavy goods on their back until you enter the camp area through the drawbridge up the hill, and in the tent is none other than Caesar himself, who's eager to speak with the courier for the first time. So I finally get to meet the courier who's accomplished so much in so little time. That's why I summoned you here, right? I mean, a man nearly kills you, and your response is to track him across the breath of the Mojave? The more the courier speaks with Caesar, the more the Legion's philosophy and why they do what they do becomes apparent. Caesar does not hold any deep-seated hatred for the NCR, nor does he simply see them as another tribe to be conquered. But rather, he's seen the MCR's flimsy democracy and attempts at replicating the old American government, and has come to the conclusion that it's destined to crumble underneath its own weight. The NCR is a loose conglomerate of individuals looking out for themselves. It's lost virtue. No one cares about the collective, the greater good. Greed runs rampant. The government is corrupt, accepting bribes from Brahmin barons and landowners to the detriment of citizens. It's not built to last. I'm just hastening the inevitable. Growing up in the NCR, Caesar was able to see their flaws on full display, even from the beginning under Tandy's administration. Ironically, I was born a profligate myself, a citizen of the NCR. Do you want my opinion as a former citizen or future conqueror? Actually, my opinion is the same either way. As a young man, I was taught to venerate President Tandy of Shady Sands, the founding mother of the new California Republic. Did you know her presidency lasted 52 years? And that her father, Aradesh, was the Republic's first president? Does that sound like a democracy to you? Or a hereditary dictatorship? Because the council didn't dare oppose her. She was too popular. She had the people's love. So things ran smoothly, more or less. And as soon as she was gone, as soon as there really could be democracy, what happened then? Ever since losing its queen, the NCR has been weaker, more diffuse. Democracy has been its weakness, not its strength. Caesar bases much of his motives on Hegelian dialectics, a line of reasoning from 18th century German philosopher George Hegel. No. I'll destroy it because it's inevitable that it be destroyed. It's Hegelian dialectics, not personal animosity. How do I put this basically enough? It's a philosophical theory, the kind you might encounter if you took time to read some books. The fundamental premise 
is to envision history as a sequence of dialectical conflicts. Each dialectic begins with a proposition, a thesis, which inherently contains or creates its opposite, an antithesis. Thesis and antithesis. The conflict is inevitable. But the resolution of the conflict yields something new, a synthesis, eliminating the flaws in each, leaving behind common elements and ideas. The bombs wipe the slate clean. Human civilization descended to a level of ignorance that effectively set our cultural progress back to zero. The NCR has all the problems of the ancient Roman Republic. Extreme bureaucracy, corruption, extensive senatorial infighting. Just as with the ancient Republic, it is natural that a military force should conquer and transform the NCR into a military dictatorship. Thesis and antithesis. The Colorado River is my Rubicon. And Caesar has to be correct to some extent. Many of the Legion soldiers are grateful to Caesar for giving their lives meaning and purpose, saving them from their borderline meaningless and difficult lives as tribals barely scrapping by. I am a loyal servant of Kaisar, and I thank my good fortune for the day that he plucked me as a babe from the shore of the Great Salt Lake. For five years I have had the privilege of serving as a Deconus. If fortune continues to smile upon me, I will serve him until I draw my last breath. I hope that satisfies your curiosity about me, because I won't waste any more of Kaisar's time talking about myself. And I said, thank you, Mars, for cleansing the earth with fire to wipe the slate clean for your son. Kaisar to form the region and bring civilization to the world. Meanwhile, NCR troopers constantly complain about their service in the Republic, with their idle dialogue, as well as with courier intervention in the NCR. I've heard of you. Did you figure on coming out here and helping us lowly troopers out? My problem? My problem is we're all going to die. We're out of food, we're out of men, and we're out of time. The Legion is right outside waiting to kill us all. Today, tomorrow, it doesn't matter. We're all going to die here. Everyone is either starving or dying out here. Left out to dry by the rest of the NCR. Call your regime. This place. I'd rather be anywhere else but here. It's been a long tour. All I can think about now is going back home. When I got this assignment, I was hoping there'd be more gambling. Anyone paying any sort of attention will notice that all of the things the NCR soldiers complain about, Caesar points out as a flaw in the Republic. The Legion are a devout group of warriors who fight primarily with their blades and their bare fists because of their origins as tribals who barely even knew how to fight with the guns they salvaged. Kaisar has taught us that over-reliance on firearms can only weaken us in the long run. It's why we train heavily with our blades and our fists. Unlike an NCR trooper, a legionary is always ready to fight, regardless of the circumstance he finds himself in. And with their brute force backed by the strategy of Ulpes, Lucius, and Caesar, they really are a faction to be reckoned with, and can easily be considered one of the strongest in Fallout's history, despite only appearing in a single game. Many who dislike the Legion like to look to their potential future as a point of criticism. If anything happens to Caesar during the events of Fallout New Vegas, Legate Lanius takes his place. Legion detractors, as well as some who are even for the Legion, fear that Lanius lacks the wisdom and value of strategy outside of combat needed to lead a nation that Caesar possesses, and that under his control, the Legion will fail. The Neus is savage. Savagely loyal too, but only to me. He has no love for my Legion. But this has its uses. He has no attachment to his men, no compunction about battlefield losses. All he cares about is destroying the enemy. This is also an idea pushed by the various NPCs you can talk with about Lanius. In my opinion, however, this couldn't be further from the truth, and this is backed up when the courier finally gets to confront Lanius at his camp during the Second Battle of Hoover Dam. Finally, Mars has accepted my sacrifices and unleashes me. I just want to start this section off by saying this guy has a great voice, especially for his type of villain. And while the way your villain is written and their place in the story should take priority, these first impression qualities like their design or their voices can also go a pretty long way in making your villain intimidating or at least memorable, along with having some memorable quotes to go along with that voice. You almost convinced me otherwise, but justice comes to all in time, and it now comes to you. Regardless, reaching the Legate's camp, he's eager to fight. An envoy of Vegas, 
yet you carry yourself for battle. If so, you cannot truly be of that city of cowards. Which we can oblige. We shall see how brave you are when nailed to the walls of Hoover Dam, your body facing west so you may watch your world die. But this may not be a particularly good idea at some lower levels. We can, however, use the easier option, and that is talking Lanius down with either our speech or barter skills. I see you fight with words, like all beneath the flag of the bear. Let us hope your skill with weapons proves greater. These skill checks can be pretty difficult and easy to fail if we haven't dumped a lot of skill points into barter or speech. And if we do fail, we're locked in a dialogue path where we're forced to fight him. Enough! Your words have done nothing but delay the inevitable. Now, see what my hounds and my blade will bring to you. Through using our speech skill, we can convince Lanius that the battle is already decided and that the NCR has won, considering the fact that the courier has already made it here to his camp. So you seek quarter? Terms of surrender? Our roads into NCR are hung with the bodies of those who attempted to negotiate with us. Save your speeches. We will take Hoover Dam and move forward until our feet crush the setting sun beneath them. He'll refute you though, saying that the Hoover Dam has yet to see the Legion's full strength. Which could be true, since the Praetorians are here with Lanius. However, there are still Centurions on the front lines of the dam, but I digress. You can continue to use your speech skill more until he decides to retreat and allow both armies to fully ready themselves. <sighs> My coming would have saved you, set your people free in ways they cannot see. War would have tested them, broken the weak with its violence, yet allowing the strong to arise. Violence gave you that strength, awakened you. I can see it upon your face. Where two bullets left their mark, know that I shall return east. I shall not remain there forever. On that day, the strength of the bear shall be tested. If the West is one day filled with ones such as you, perhaps it shall be a worthy fight indeed. Until the day when our armies meet again, NCR, I shall wait for you on the battlefield. The other dialogue option, and the more compelling of the two in my opinion, is to use your barter skill to try to convey to Lanius that if the Legion is victorious, it will be the end of them. I have no need to hold it. Anything the West sends against me shall break against the wall that is the Legion. This is because of the NCR's overwhelming numbers back home in California, as well as the lack of Legion supply lines in supporting communities. If the Legion were to mobilize their armies to conquer the West, they would lose all of their territory to the East, along with most of their soldiers who either become regular casualties of war, or will die because of the lack of supplies. You think we would march without a means of resupply? We have the fort, we will have the dam, other communities will fall, and we shall harvest as we move west. We only need move forward. There are many towns, many slaves, ripe for the taking as the tribes from the east were. Bringing this to the Legate's attention, he has an internal conflict where he's forced to recollect. He has to think to himself, and admit Caesar's campaign will eventually become the undoing of the Legion due to their lack of supplies or community. Long ago, when taking Denver, I had to face such a challenge. Many died over many years to claim the city as ours. It was the lines of food and water that nearly broke the Legion's strength, and the lack of tribals near that cursed city. When I felt in that struggle, I felt as I saw the map of the West. The West is a trap. The bear has already been caught in it, and it is dying. He doesn't retreat out of fear of the NCR or of the courier, but because he doesn't want to see any more of his men die for what he comes to realize is a lost cause. The East was a hard-fought campaign. Even now, Kaisar drew too much of the Legion's blood needed there for this. Hoover Dam is but a place. I will not have it be the gravestone of the Legion, whether quickly or as you describe, slowly, by attrition. Which is a direct contrast to those who say he has no care for his men or for the Legion as a whole. If this was true, 
He would have no fear or concern of the Legion potentially failing due to overextending themselves the same way the NCR has. It, however, could be true that he may not have the capacity to lead an entire nation like Caesar does, and this is evident in some of the endgame Legion slides that change depending on whether or not Caesar is alive. Merciless in their assault on the NCR, the remnants struck fear into the hearts of even the centurions at Hoover Dam. Well aware of the full extent of their power, Kaisar commanded his troops to not pursue them. Merciless in their assault on the NCR, the remnants struck fear into the hearts of even the centurions at Hoover Dam. Kaisar's heirs aggressively pursued the remnants into Arizona, losing hundreds of legionaries in the process and gaining nothing in return. But unlike Caesar, however, you can speak and reason with him in a genuine way. Many Fallout fans draw a comparison between Legat Lanius and Frank Horrigan from Fallout 2. You've gotten a lot farther than you should have, but then you haven't met Frank Horrigan either. Your ride's over, Muty. Time to die. Both are good characters and serve well as final bosses to their respective games, and I can see the similarities, but I think only Lanius serves as a great villain. Frank Horrigan is also good, but his weakness is his position in the Enclave of Fallout 2 which is entirely shrouded in mystery until the latter half of the game. Whereas you can ask most NPCs in the Mojave about their full opinion on and what they know about Caesar's Legion. And neither can the Chosen One side with the Enclave, unlike the Legion or even the Master. So what shall it be? Do you join the Unity? Or do you die here? Join! Die! Join! Die! Lanius is devoted to his cause and to the Legion but he's not too devoted to the point of blind loyalty or not being able to see their misdirections or faults, of which there are many, like the way most of their society is founded on the guidance of one mortal man, unlike the Republic or even Mr. House who won't die without courier intervention. If you want to see the fate of democracies, look out the windows. The Legion doesn't have any supporting communities or cities outside of the ones they conquer and take over, due to no one wanting to associate with them because of their brutality and unforgiving nature. They're also not adapting too well to the NCR's use of more modern weapons like sniper rifles or explosives, and without courier intervention, they never use their howitzer at the fort to their advantage. Their men take comfort in and rely on killing at a distance. They will not have the luxury of such comforts this time. Our warriors will wash over them in a tide of blood, severing arms before they can attack legs before they can run, and heads before they can pray. And finally, a flaw that I feel many within the Fallout community overlook, and that's the way Caesar treats his soldiers. He has no problem with, and even enjoys, completely throwing their lives away, murdering them himself for the slightest mistake or failure. Mark my words, you piece of sh**. This is the last time you will ever refuse to perform an order I've given you. If you ever, ever disobey me again, I will order my Praetorians to hack you to death with their machetes for my entertainment. And these are his soldiers. These are the men who put their lives on the line to serve him and maintain his empire. And without them, he is nothing. Most of his soldiers think nothing of this because they were either born into or manipulated and beaten into thinking it was acceptable, with the exception of a Centurion we find as an NCR captive. You think I'm going to slit my throat for some megalomaniacal self-appointed dictator? I didn't work my way up to have it all be taken from me out of some irrational paranoia. Kaisar's losing it. Privately, he complains of headaches. Whatever it is, it's affecting his ability to lead. He has an operative planted in this very base, but does he use his agent to rescue me? No. He's content to have the agent spend his nights radioing troop positions back to our base camp. He knows I'm here, and he's left me to rot. This is also especially apparent in the case of his first legate, Joshua Graham. Graham was Caesar's closest friend, even before they formed the Legion together and Caesar declared him his advisor as Malpais Legate. But after the first battle at Hoover Dam, and after Graham had no plan against the NCR's tactics, the Legion was swiftly and easily defeated, and Caesar, unimpressed with his old friend and Legate's failure, covered him in pitch, engulfed him in fire, and threw him into the Grand Canyon, along with forbidding his people to ever speak Graham's true name again, as punishment for a disgraced defeat at the hands of the NCR. Kaisar has forbidden us from ever speaking his true name again. And so we simply refer to him as the Burned Man. He's a story to frighten the younger legionaries. He's dead. No man, no matter how tough, 
could survive a fall into the Grand Canyon. Who, speaking of which, has a side quest where the courier can help a group of their soldiers get into shape when their superiors have mostly given up on them. But it's because of these brutal extremes that the Legion is able to bring peace to entire states, as well as keep the roads safe for caravans and traders, who have to face the Republic's insane taxes for the minimal protection that they provide. But I've been to Arizona, boss. Before the Legion, it was a nasty place. So thick with raiders you couldn't trade with a town two miles up the road. There's some caravans that deal with the Legion, yes. And as much as it pains me to say it, any caravan marked by the Legion is safe as houses. They guard their roads, their supply lines. Even fiends would hesitate before going after any trader dealing with Legion. Caravans get butchered in the Mojave all the time, like mine. And so f Bodega. close to Vegas, you could see it from the wall. And Legion, from what I've heard, they don't do the stop tolls on the roads or in the outposts like some NCR quartermasters do. You're lucky if you turn a profit sometimes if some new officer gets assigned a route, the fees just get worse. Much as I hate the Legion, caravan life would be a hell of a lot easier if they ran the roads. Well, as long as those companies were run by men, and that's the biggest issue I see. I don't trade caps or supply anyone who keeps slaves and treats women like Brahmin in those camps of theirs. Some caravans deal with the Legion now because the security. If towns could get the same protection, a lot more tempting than you'd think. A bunch of people would be willing to side with the Legion to not have to worry about fiends and boomers and powder ganger attacks. It's not hard for some folks to sell freedom when the alternative is worse. Especially if being with NCR is going to get you on a Legion cross. They're my best customers. As long as you don't try to sell them chems or alcohol, they treat you fair. Hell, I don't even need to travel with guards most of the time in Legion territory. All the bandits are dead or run off. Between having to hire protection and getting slapped with taxes, it's more profitable to stick to Arizona and New Mexico. Before the bull came, then, much like Mojave before the bear, tribes, towns, clutching to life. Bull did a better job. Caesar is an amazing tactician and military strategist, but it's clear he hasn't given the future of his empire once he's gone much thought, and he certainly lets his pride and ego dictate the way he runs his armies. My legion's expansion has never ceased. Much of the Utah and Colorado and all of Arizona and New Mexico are mine. My conquest of the Mojave will be a glorious triumph, marking the transition of the legion from a basically nomadic tribe to a genuine empire. Just as my namesake campaigned in Gaul before he crossed the Rubicon, so have I campaigned and will cross the Colorado. We have cities of our own, but nothing compared to Vegas. Finally, my legion will have its Rome. Once he had seen the NCR's banner from across the other side of the dam, he was convinced it was his destiny to step over the bodies of those he had once shared a home with as he crossed the Colorado and entered the West. Legate Lanius is a man shrouded in mystery who, even during the days of his tribe, only fought for the glory and valor that comes with an honorable fight so that he may please Mars and his son. He has a sense of presence even in the earliest parts of the game, and while you speak to characters that have thoughts on him and the Legion during your travels, he even has great duality as a Goliath to the Courier's David and even the NCR's Israelites. Lanius is physically overwhelming like any antagonist should be, but he also has the capacity to be reasoned with and believes in a purpose like any good villain. I have walked at Kaisar's command across the east into the west, far enough to know Kaisar's word did not drive me, far enough to see at the end. There's no future in the bear or bull. I do plan to make further videos about other villain characters who can make or break their stories based on how they're written, as well as how the story integrates them into the plot, and something I'd like to do along the way of making these is to keep track of a tier list of them, ranking them from the worst to best essentially. To start off, Lanius will be the first character to go into S, and since I briefly mentioned Frank Horgan, I'll put him into A. Again, he's definitely a good character, but he just doesn't have the compelling philosophical backing that Lanius and the Legion does. Oh, and before anyone gives me any grief about considering the Legion as villains when they're intended to be morally ambiguous, you get positive karma for killing legionaries and centurions, 
and you get negative karma but legion fame for destroying a little girl's teddy bear. This slaughter pleases me. No act is more sacred than consecrating a site in the blood of one's enemies. The rest of the dam is fully under our control. A few pitiful holdouts remain, but their time is short. The general was the last source of concern. With their commander dead, the NCR will pull out of this region, allowing our conquest to continue westward, unopposed for a time. The Legion will swell with the number of slaves we will claim from this place, and the tribute we gather will fund further campaigns. Perhaps in time I will be granted the honor of conquering the land known as California. But for now we rest. For now, come, we must see to the... What did... did you put a plug in his cock tube to make him explode?